Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're kicking off another series of tutorials that focus on how to use Blender as a video editor. You may have heard of Blender in the context of generating computer graphics for animated films or 3D modeling, but surprisingly this software is incredibly versatile and can do a lot more in a lot of different areas. One of these lesser known domains is actually the realm of video editing. We're going to see that Blender is a very powerful and more importantly, very free piece of software. You don't need to pay a ton of money for something like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve when you can just use Blender. In terms of an agenda for the discussion today, here's what we're going to cover. We're going to start by talking about, very quickly, how to download and install Blender 2.80. Just so you know, at the time of publishing this video, Blender 2.80 is actually a fairly recent new release. So you may see a lot of existing documentation on the web or elsewhere that covers Blender 2.79. Surprisingly, there's a fair bit of changes between the two, so hopefully this will be useful for anyone who is on the newer system. After we've got Blender 2.80 installed, we'll take a look at setting up the video editing environment. We'll do things like figuring out how to set the dimension slash resolution of the footage, how to pick the output format and the directory, as well as selecting an audio codec. After we've got the video editing environment set up, we'll take a look at some very basic video editing operations. Namely, how would you go about adding video clips, how can you build video proxies, and how can you cut and splice video and or audio clips. And then finally, once we've got our clip all edited, we'll take a look at rendering the final edited video. So, just to note, this tutorial today is designed to be a very simple getting started discussion to get you comfortable navigating the environment. Future videos will cover more advanced topics like adding picture-in-picture, -picture, transitions, Gaussian blurs, and more. So, if this sounds like more fun than a room full of puppies, let's get started by getting Blender installed. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is just go to Google and then type in Blender. And, uh, no, we're not actually looking for Vitamixes or things to make smoothies, so instead we're going to come here to Blender.org. And this is the website, so we'll just come up here to Downloads, and we'll grab the Windows 64-bit installer. So I'll just go ahead and click on Download, and it should start downloading it in a second, and there it goes. I'll give it a couple of minutes to continue and finish downloading, and we'll be back in a second. All right, and we're back, and it looks like it finished. So I'll just click on the .msi to start the installer and drag it over here to this screen. I'll go ahead and click Next and agree to this licensing agreement and click Next and Next and then Install. And we'll give the installer a couple minutes to uh, finish. I always wonder what you're doing when you click on those uh, licensing agreements and just blindly agree to them. Maybe you're giving them your dog in your house, but uh, oh well. Oh, here, and it looks like we're done. So I'll just go ahead and click on finish. And now if we go ahead and look on the desktop, we have our nice icon to launch Blender. So let's go ahead and double click on the shortcut and that should start Blender up in the other screen. I think it's going to pull up on. So I'm going to have to drag Blender over. And here you are. We're here at Blender V2.80, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so as we talked about earlier, Blender is a very popular animation and 3D modeling system, and we're going to need to set up the environment to handle video editing. Luckily, it's really as simple as coming up here to the File menu, clicking on New, and going to Video Editing. And this will now set up the environment and the layout to be conducive to video editing. Now, rather than exhaustively walking through what all of these different panels and panes are, let's just start using it to splice a couple of clips together. And hopefully in this process, we'll see the necessary operations that are needed to do something very simple um, from a video editing pr perspective. So. The first thing I want to do is let's make a folder on our computer's hard drive, which will hold the clips and eventually the Blender file and all of the edits that we're making. So I've already done that here. So let me pull up my C drive and I've got this folder here just on my C drive called Blender example. And in here, you're going to see I already have three uh, files that I want to work with. So the first one is an MP4 clip. It's just a video clip um, of uh, me doing some stuff on the whiteboard. The second one is an MOV file, which is a, a you'll notice here it's actually a vertical it was taken by an iPhone and it's in the vertical orientation and it's just of my dog playing in the snow and then lastly I've got an mp3 file which we're gonna want to use to kinda add a soundtrack to our video so now that I've got this folder here where I want to contain all of my uh, content and materials I find that it's easiest to try to save my blender file in this same location so coming back to blender all we want to do here is let's do that very first before we make any other changes. So I'm just going to come over here to File and Save. 
and now you're going to get this navigation pane and it's a little bit hard to see but all we need to do is basically navigate to the location of where you want to save this so in my case I want to go here on my C drive so I kept clicking on the up arrow to get up to my C drive come here to blender example this is where I want to save the file so here I don't want to call it untitled maybe let's just call this how about simple editing demo dot blend is the file extension so if I go ahead and save this now click on save blender file and I come back to my folder you'll see that we've got this blender file this simple editing demo dot blend this is basically where it's gonna save all of the um, the transitions or the cuts or all of the information that's needed so really you really need just this file and I guess obviously the source files that we're going to include in our project in just a second but really this is the one of the main um, files that blender is going to utilize during the workflow okay so let's go ahead and continue setting up the environment so what I like to do next is I like to come over here to this far a uh, kind of upper right panel or pane where it says dimensions now what you're going to want to do here is first let's set the resolution of what we want the final rendered video to look like so in this case it looks like 1920 by 1080 pixels and I have this at hundred percent make sure that this is this is at the resolution you want and furthermore that this is at hundred percent in older versions of Blender, namely Blender 2.79, this was, I think, by default at 50%, and every single time you had to make sure you, you bumped up to 100%, otherwise you would get basically a movie that was half the resolution you would expect. But anyway, this is an easy place where you can make these changes. So let's just start from top to bottom. So the resolution, yeah, that seems to be the right resolution in pixels for an HD video. So I can leave all the rest of these as defaults right here frame start and frame end this is basically how many frames do you want to render that's gonna make a little bit more sense later so why don't we leave this as as 1 and 250 and we'll come back to this in a second once we import some video so just keep this in mind okay alright so scrolling down we don't actually need to deal too much with the frame rate we're gonna see that that is also gonna automatically be updated when we import a movie so let's ignore this for now now coming down here to output though this is something that we are gonna want to change so when you render your final movie it's gonna kick out a output file and right now it's it's going to some weird random temporary directory again I like to make sure everything is in the same location so I'm gonna click on this browse button here and I'm going to browse to that same location namely my blender example folder that we had just made now again you can go ahead and navigate to it through here using the up button or here in the recent pane it's gonna start remembering some of the things that you've been doing so for example right here it remembers that we were just in this blender example folder so if I click here you'll see these are the files that we were dealing with earlier so what you can do here is you can name the output of um, the the project so what I'm gonna call this is let's how about call this final whoops so final rendered video okay and then I'll go ahead and hit accept now what that is going to do is it's now when we're done at the end of this process and we want to save the video it's going to stick it in C blender example and it's going to make a file called final rendered video with whatever the appropriate file extension is so great all right let's keep scrolling down so I'm just going to scroll down with my middle mouse button to kind of scroll this pane down a little bit now next thing we're gonna to want to do is what are we gonna output now by default this is set to PNG and what that means is it's gonna to try to render a whole boatload of PNG pictures which is not what we want for our video editing project so I'm gonna click on this drop down and let's instead change this to how about a FF MPEG video which seems a little bit more reasonable okay so when you change that you'll get a couple more options obviously I think I would like a color not a black and white video let's click now on this encoding drop down okay so I'm gonna click on this and then you're gonna have a couple of other options so in here container I'm gonna make this an mp4 video because that's what I like to work with so I'm gonna click on mp4 great and I can change some other things like the output quality so for example instead of just medium quality if I want it to be like how about like perceptually lossless so it really doesn't lose too much I'll click on that okay that seems pretty good the encoding speed I'll leave as default the last thing you're going to need to do here is if your video has audio like a soundtrack or spoken voice or anything like that and you want that included in your video you're going to have to choose an audio codec to do that so I'm going to click on audio codec and I'm going to pick AAC which is what I typically use okay 
So uh, again, I'll leave the those options also standard. So at this point, I think we've set up everything um, to be ready for video editing. So I'm going to come here and save again. And notice you'll see that there's a star up here in the upper left. So with the star, that tells you that basically you have unsaved changes. So if I click on save, we'll see the star go away. There it goes. It went away. All right, so now that we've got everything set up, we want to actually import some of those video clips so we can start working with them. So the easiest way to do that is we'll come down here in this kind of bottom pane, and you'll see there's a thing that says add. So I'll click on this add, and then what I want to add is I want to add a movie, so I'll click on that. And it should take us to our folder where we were working on it. Again, we have these two clips. Uh, let's start with clip1.mp4. So I'll just click on this, and then I'll say add movie strip. And here it goes. It drops it in, and you'll see there's two of these tracks here. One on channel one, one on channel two. So basically, these are the video and the, or excuse me, this one is the video. And the way you can tell is when I click on this top kind of purplish one, you come up here and you see this icon, and that's clearly a video. And if I click on the bottom one, you'll see a music kind of note. So this is the audio component. So these two uh, make up the uh, this particular clip one. Now, you're going to see that if you drag up here, this is sort of the scrubbing tool, you can kind of see what the, play, the, the video clip looks like, okay? And you can see that it's quite large, and it goes off the screen. So I could come down here and drag this little bottom uh, slider to move it around, but I really kind of want to just zoom out. That might be helpful. So the way to zoom out is just put your mouse somewhere here in the video sequencer, and I'm just going to scroll down on with my middle mouse wheel. So I'll just keep scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. There you go. Okay, so now I can see the entire video. And here's where uh, a couple of things that we might want to bring to your attention. So notice that portions of this are they, they kind of are a different shading than these other regions over here what the portions that are sort of in shading um are indicating they're indicating which areas of the video or which sections of the video are you actually going to render or are you actually working with so that goes back to again remember we said that this was going to matter up here the frame start and the frame end so what we see is right now we're only rendering the first 250 frames of animation, which apparently only looks like it goes about a third through the video. So if I want to be dealing with the entire video, I'm going to have to increase this number. So let's increase this number to, I don't know, how about, uh, how about 700? So I hit 7 and hit enter. You notice that that shading gets a lot bigger, and now we uncover, encompass the entire video. So that's pretty helpful. Uh, let's do another couple of things that will help us maybe with visibility and understanding what the what the clips look like. Um, let's click click on the audio clip, right? We said that this this kind of tealish color down here was the audio clip, and you saw that with these music notes here. The other way that might be helpful to visualize what that that waveform looks like is if you go ahead and come down here, make sure you've selected the strip tab. You can click on this draw waveform button, and then it will draw the waveform. So you can kind of see where you're talking and where you're not and things like that. Maybe what we might want to do at this point is we might want to just play the video just to get an idea of what it looks like. So if you want to play this, again, we know that this bar up here is a scrubber. You can just, you know, left click and drag, and that will scrub through. The other way you can do this is if you just come down here to this play button, it will just play the video. So let's go ahead and try that now. Responsibility, we have to deal with both of these issues here if we're trying to actually implement them, right? Great, and you can see that that's working, but if you noticed up here in the preview pane, it was very jerky, right? It was not very smooth, and furthermore, if you kind of look up here, you'll see the uh, frames per second. Normally, that should be at 30. In fact, if we come back to our uh, scene over here, remember earlier this frame rate said 24 frames per second, but when we, as soon as we imported that video, this changed now to be the frame rate of the video, so it should be playing at 29.9 seven frames per second if i play this um this preview here let's hit it again right well lqr is going to give us a technique to directly address this so let's it's not playing at anywhere near the real time rate so the problem is the clip that we loaded in it was a high definition video clip if we come over here to this original clip and look at the properties 
you know, it's a 1920 by 1080, so it's a it's a HD video clip. So what we want Blender to do is instead, when we're just working with with simple, uh, we're doing the video editing. I don't want to work with the high resolution video. I want to build what's called a proxy of that video, or basically a lower resolution version of that video that Blender will use to uh, display, and I can work with, and then. When I want to render the final video, I'll then use the uh, Blender will natively and naturally use the high definition video. But when I'm just doing making simple edits, I, I don't need that fidelity. So to do that, what we can do is let's click on the video strip right here, right? It was this kind of purpley blue uh, channel here on channel two. Okay, so the way we're going to make a proxy in Blender uh, 2.80 is, again, you click on this, you come over here to the to the lower right section, and you're going to want to come down here to this, this tab here which says proxy and cache. If you click on that, you'll see that you've got a couple of other options. What we're gunning for down here is this one down here which says strip proxy and time codes. So I'm gonna click on this radio checkbox, or sorry, the checkbox. As Soon as you click on that checkbox, you get a couple of other options. The one we care about is this 25%. So what this is basically saying is I want to make a one quarter resolution video. You could do a 50% or 75%, but you know, in the, in the interest of making this as smooth and as fast as possible, I'm gonna pick the smallest size for my proxy. So I'm gonna click on 25%. And what I wanna do is let me move Blender kind of off to one side and I'll try to, here, let's see if we can do, put both of them on, on one on either side. There we go, okay? So here's the, our output folder, and here is Blender on the left. So notice what we're going to do is when you click on this rebuild proxy and timecode indices with all these settings, what Blender is going to do is it's going to start scanning through this video and building one of these uh, proxies, okay? So pay attention. When I click on this, notice down here in the Blender icon in the taskbar, you see this green filling up? This is basically how far along you are in the process. And notice it also created this folder called BL Proxy. Now, I don't know why we have to stare here at this green bar filling up, and I can just see it just finished, right? In the older versions of Blender, there was a progress bar within the native Blender which showed you how far along this rebuild process you were. As you can probably imagine, if you have a large file and it's an HD file, it might take a long time to build this proxy. But for whatever reason, that progress bar is missing in, in version 2.80. So you're kind of forced to resort and watch the icon in the Windows taskbar to see when that green bar fills up. So it is kind of a progress bar. It's just not in the progress bar in the section you would expect. So that being said, let's go ahead and look. You see that you've got now this BL proxy uh, folder. And this is where Blender is going to stick all of the proxies for all of the different clips that you're using in your video. So you can see here it is. Here's clip1.mp4. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do coming back to Blender to use that proxy is up here in the preview pane, I don't want to view a high resolution original version of it. I wanna view the proxy. So the way I'm gonna do that here, I forgot how you actually access it via the buttons, but what you do is you're gonna left click somewhere, namely probably in the black is probably the best place to do it, and then push the N key. And N is going to bring up, N as in November, will bring up some of these other um, options. And now what I want to do here is in the proxy rendered size, I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm going to say I don't want to view the HD version. I want to view this 25% proxy that I just made. So now watch, as soon as I click this, look at the resolution here. For example, maybe, maybe you see right now you can read this thing that says control something. <laughs> Gosh, my handwriting is horrible. But when you click on this 25%, it's going to swap in that lower resolution preview for our editing purposes. So when I click this, look at that. The resolution got a little bit worse. It's a little harder to see. But now this scrubber, if you click on this, it's much faster, much smoother. And when I click on play, I have to deal with both of these issues here if we're trying to actually. And them, notice right? now what that it's not, actually you know, playing at 30 frames per second as we expected. So it. this is perfect. All right, so now that we've got our proxies built, uh, I think we're ready to start editing. So why don't I move the scrubber back and let's just play until some section where we want to say cut the video. So possibility we have to deal with both of these issues here if we're trying to actually implement them, right? Okay, let's say this is a good spot. So we say right here, you can kind of see is a little bit break in the conversation. Let's say I want to edit the video at this point.
There's a couple of ways you can do this. What I usually like to do is as I'm editing the video, I like to drop in markers to help me understand where different areas of the video that I might be interested in are. So to drop in a marker at the place where the um, preview bar is located at, just come here to marker and click on add marker. And you'll see what gets added is this little triangle here to the sequencer along with a number. So the number is how many frames or the frame number at which you drop this marker. So you see at frame number 330, we went ahead and dropped a marker. So now if you had, had scrubbed or moved around somewhere else, you can quickly jump back to this same location by coming up here to marker and just saying jump to next or previous marker. So if I click on jump to next marker, I will bring myself exactly to this location here at frame 335. So what we might want to do now is let's cut out the entire second half of this video because um, I, I kind of only want the first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the video section right here and I'm going to make a cut at this point. So there's a couple ways you can do this. One way is you can, um, whoops, sorry. Uh, the way I like to do this is I like to just press K. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly how you did that here. Is it strip? Uh, yeah, here we go. Cut or okay cut and hard cut are two different things but I usually just use the cut one we'll go into the details of what cut and hard cut are uh, at a later video but for now cut is totally fine so K or cut right here you'll see is gonna split this now into two separate uh, two separate video clips we probably want to do the same thing for the audio right because I want uh, the video and the audio to go together so I'll click here on the audio Go ahead and press the K for key or kilo button. Now I've gone ahead and split these. So what I want to do is you can easily delete these these this extraneous video and audio clip. So to do that, just click on the one you want. And again, I think you can just come here. I usually just hit X. Yeah, here it is. Delete or add the X key, or I believe the delete button works too. But if you click delete, you'll get a confirmation and say, yeah, I really do want to erase a strip. And ba bam, it's gone. Same thing. You come here. I'm just going to push the delete button. Yeah, there it goes. Same thing. Erase strips and it's gone. It's great. So we've gone ahead and cut this video. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and save. We've done a good bit of work. Let's go ahead and import that second video into the uh, the project. So if you remember, the second video was this vertical video that we were that we took with an iPhone. And notice it's a completely different file extension. It's a .mov instead of an MP4. But you know, Blender's not going to care. I mean, what's what's that thing? It's, it's it's not it's not Honey Badger don't care, right? It's Blender don't care. So if I just come in here and say marker or excuse me, um, add movie and I'll go ahead and click on my MOV file and click add to movie strip it went ahead and imported that thing no problem okay um, although notice that it's kind of in the wrong orientation so maybe that's a teaser for one of our future videos where we'll talk about how to do transformations on video strips if you want to say rotate it or um, shrink it or zoom in or things like that but for now, let horizontal is fine. Um, this is close enough. So what we can do is again, let's do our, our little trick here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the. Um, this is the uh, audio portion of it, and I'll come over here to the left side and to visualize the waveform. Notice again, it doesn't show up because I haven't clicked on the right tab. I'll come up here to the strip tab, and then I can go ahead and click on draw waveform. Okay. So I see the waveform. So let's uh, let's again, we'll scrub through this. And again, notice we have the same issue where this scrubbing is super choppy, right? So if I hit play again, Ooh, you'll notice no the job. frame rate is super low. <laughs> so we've got the same problem. We need to rebuild a proxy for this second strip that we made. So again, let me scoot this off to one side, bring up my uh, folder. I'll come here into the BL proxy folder. And let's just watch uh, Blender make another proxy for this. So to, to, to build the proxy, again, remember, all you got to do is click on the video file that you want to build the proxy for. Come here to the pr uh, proxy and cache section. Come down here to strip proxy and timecode. Click on the checkbox. Make sure it's at 25. And then just click on the rebuild proxy and timecode indices. And then come down here and watch this green icon in the Blender um launcher in the taskbar fill up and you'll notice here it is it's building it building it building it and there it is so now we've got a proxy and since we already have set the renderer up here to use a proxy scene render size of 25 percent we should be good to go so if i go ahead and hit play on this <laughs> now, now everything Mark, is smooth now? we're running at 30 frames a second and, and, and life is good 
So again, let's just go ahead and um, try to edit this video. So I'll go find a good spot uh, here. This looks like a good spot. Well, well let's, let's get the dog catching the, vi the, the snowball. So let's cut this video. So again, maybe what I will do is I'll add, um, I guess I don't really necessarily need to add a marker here because we're gonna move things around. So you don't need to add a marker in order to cut something. I can just go ahead and, and place the scrubber at the location where you want. Maybe let's put it right, uh, how about right here? Have it right here. There we go. And I'll click on the video. I'll click on K on my keyboard to, to cut it. And then I will click on the audio strip. And same thing, I'll click on K on my keyboard or come here to strip and just say cut. Great. And then we can get rid of these, these extraneous sections. So I'll delete those extraneous sections. And then same thing, let's go ahead and... Okay, that looks like a good section to stop. All right, so we'll stop there. And again, I will cut both of these. So I'll cut K, K, delete, delete. Great. So now we've got these two strips, and uh, but you'll notice there's a gap between the two here. Okay, so to close this gap, we have to move one of these strips. Let's move the dog strip and have it smoothly butt up against the, the previous lecturing strip. So to move a strip, it's also pretty simple. All you gotta do is click on the strip that you want and then come here to strip, and I think it's G, I, I always just use G. Um, where is the, is it not here? Well, it's, it's the G key. I, I've gotten so used to the hot key that I forgot actually how to get it to happen uh, normally. Well, anyway, click on the strip you want to move, and, and more importantly, click in the middle of it. You'll notice if we if you zoom in on the front and the back of them, there are these sort of these arrows. You don't want to click on that and click G, hit G. That's going to do something different that we'll cover in a different uh, tutorial. But to move this, click on the strip, click G as in golf, and you'll see what ends up happening is now if I move my mouse, I'm able to move this strip around. So I'm just going to move it, and I'm going to have it butt up. And notice there's two numbers in front and behind of the strip. So that's the beginning and ending frame number. So you see that the previous clip, clip 01, ends at, at frame number 334. So I want this one to start at 335. So I'm going to move this to the side until, there we go. And if I click, that will basically place the strip appropriately. Now notice it didn't move the audio clip, so I could, I probably should have grouped them together and done them at the same time, but for the interest of practice, let's just do the exact same thing. I'll click on the audio, click on the G key, and then move it down. And you'll notice that if you move it and have them overlap, one of them goes red and says you can't do that, so I'm gonna move it until they line up nicely here. I think I want, there, perfect. So we're, I think we're getting set, we're, we're getting really close. So if I now come back here and play. I'm right. Perfect, Ooh. right? Go, 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 go. Trip to the other strip. Um, why don't we do, uh, let's, let's add, how about a soundtrack to make this a little bit more exciting here. So you can add a soundtrack to your video, just like adding a movie clip, you can add an audio clip. So again, let's just come up here to add. And now instead of movie, let's add a sound. So here, I've got this free um, MP3 that I got from the YouTube audio li uh, library, so it should be license free, so I should be able to include it in my video. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. Again, remember that we put everything in this, this single folder, right? So here's the, the, the asset that I wanna include in my project is this video, uh, sorry, this audio file. So I'll just go ahead and click on this and then say add sound. And let's go ahead and do our trick of visualizing the uh, waveform so we can see where there's sound. Okay, this looks pretty great. So all we gotta do now is line this up and let's go ahead and I will move this audio file by just clicking on it. Again, clicking G as in golf and I will move this around so everything lines up nicely. Let's make it start at one. Perfect. And now if we play this together. We're incredibly powerful, right? But, but as Spider-Man's uncle said, right? With great power comes great responsibility. Great. We have to deal with both. So now I've got the audio playing as well. The, the audio is a little loud. You can easily change that by just clicking on the audio track or the audio channel, coming over here to the strip section, and then here in volume, just type in a number lower than one. I don't know, how about uh, point 0.2 and then hit enter. A lot of these uh, controls in Blender, you can also, instead of just clicking and entering a number, cl left click and hold and then slide the mouse to the right or the left and you'll see that this changes the, the value kind of in a dynamic fashion. And it's really nice that you can see the waveform updating kind of down there in the sequencer. So 
There we go, point two. That seems pretty reasonable. Let's play this again, see how it sounds. Responsibility, we have to deal with both of these issues here if we're trying to actually implement them, right? Okay, that sounds better. So at this point, I think we're almost done. The last thing we should probably do here is, again, let's come back to that section where we talked about the output. And you notice that this section that is highlighted is all of the tracks that we're rendering here, or all the frames that we're rendering. And you'll notice that that goes beyond the end of this last clip. Well, that's probably pretty boring because no one wants to just look at a blank screen and listen to music. So let's make it stop here somewhere. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't have to be at the very end. How about how about somewhere like here? So if you move the scrubbing uh, section to uh, an area that you're interested in, if you look down here in the bottom screen, this number is actually the frame number that you're at. So again, watch this move. As I move this around, you can see that frame number counter change. Let's say I want to stop here at frame number 434. So to do that, we need to come back up here to the upper right pane and say, I want to end at uh, frame number 434 and hit enter. And there you go. You can see that the section stops. So now if I play this, it will automatically stop. And no, no. Full state well, feedback controllers were incredibly again. powerful, right? Okay. Um, and same thing, the beginning doesn't have to start at frame number one. If I wanted to start this video like, uh, I don't know, right here, I'll just go ahead and look at what the frame number is. It's actually frame number 97. So I'll come up here and say in frame start, change that to 97, and bam. Again, you see that section of that kind of darker highlighting will change to reflect the areas of interest. So at this point, I think this is pretty great. Let's go ahead and save our our file and let me scoot blender off to one side so we can look at the output screen at the same time we're ready to basically output or render this final cut uh edited movie together so to do that um you come up here to render and you click on render animation or control f12 so when i click on that it's going to basically start compiling and rendering this entire scene where i've got video i've got a soundtrack i've got multiple clips i've got all that kind of good stuff and it will only do that between frames 97 and frames 434 so let's go ahead and give it a whirl so i'm going to click on render and click render animation and here you go you, it's going to give you this preview, and you'll notice that it is a high-resolution preview. It's not the 25% proxy that we were talking about earlier. So this is exactly what we want. And again, um, if you want to see or view progress, you can look at it down here in this icon. I believe if you come over here to Blender, you, yeah, here you go. You can also watch it count up. Remember, we're trying to get to frame 434, and you can watch the rendering process. So it is outputting... You can see here in a second, hopefully, uh, here's here's the file. We're going to wait for it to finish. So it's almost there. There it is. It's done. And now here is our final video. So let me just look at the details so we can see. So this last sampled video, you see we get, this is the name of the output that we picked, right? If you remember coming back to our Blender settings, um, I think I need to blow this up a little bit more, right? In the output, we said output something called final rendered video, and it does that. Here is final rendered video, and it gives you actually the start, the, the frames, the starting frame and the ending frame. So this file right here should be the combined video. So just to convince yourself of that, let's just double click this and open it up in VLC or some other video editing program. And here you are. Here is the composite edited video. We're trying to actually implement them, right? All right, so let's take a moment to summarize as well as make a small little cheat sheet of all of the different operations that I like to do uh, when I'm starting a new Blender project. So we saw that the first thing we did was we needed to set up Blender for video editing, and we saw that that was as easy as coming up into this upper left and just selecting File, New, and then changing it to Video Editing, and then saving the star.blend file. After that, we saw that we needed to go and set some project settings, and that was mostly over here in this uh, upper right panel and I'm listing here some of the operations and changes that we made that were different than the default after that we saw that once the project was set up we could start adding video and building proxies so to add the movies we saw that that was pretty darn easy you just come down and you say add movies but then to build the proxies that took a little bit more work down here in this lower right corner 
Um, and after we built the proxies, we also needed to change the v the preview window, which is up here, by changing that proxy rendered size to the appropriate dimensions. So that was the only small oddity. And then also we looked at how to actually uh, display the waveform on audio tracks as well. Finally, we saw that you could do a lot of very simple basic editing operations in Blender, just like you can with any other video processing software. You can things like add markers, move clips around, cut them. And then we saw that the last thing you needed to do was just render the final video using control F12. And we saw most of this action now move down to this bottom central uh, sequencer pane. So with that, I think this is a pretty good comprehensive uh, look at how to get started using Blender as a video editor. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if so, I hope you'll also consider sticking around and maybe even subscribing. Surprisingly, if you just scroll down a little ways and click on that subscribe button, it really does help me continue making these videos. And I'm looking forward to making more of these Blender videos. Next, we'll start looking at how to do things like adding picture in picture or uh, Gaussian blurs or other more advanced topics in Blender. We'll see that it's a very full featured video editor. So with all that being said, I hope I will catch you at one of these future discussions. I'll talk to you later. Bye.